Good morning, my dears. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. I'm so grateful for you. Today, we are going to be talking about setting healthy boundaries and how to communicate those boundaries in really healthy ways, but also finding the language. And let me preface this with I don't have the full answer for this. This is what I'm focusing on this week. And it seems as though a lot of my clients and friends and fellow light workers are going through this. Um, and so it, I kind of have this little analogy that I want to go with it. Um, so it's, it's like if, if the world is a puzzle and we're all individual puzzle pieces, I'm making my salad at the same time. So if you hear vegetables being chopped, that is why. So we're all a puzzle piece on this planet. We're all here, we're all on purpose. And we know that we're part of the grander puzzle that is the whole. But I wanna look a little bit more on our personal macros right now and look at a personal or personal micro. Um, I guess our personal macro, I guess I'm messing those two terms up. But our personal puzzle, our personal puzzle of the people, the family that we were born into, um, and if we have to communicate with them still, the friends that we choose to be around, the, you know, um, colleagues, the people in our lives, you know, our, our comrades, our friends, you know, the people that, you know, are on our team and in our flock. So that is our puzzle. Those people are there. They're not going anywhere. That's your puzzle. And when I say that they're not going anywhere, that does not mean that you have to physically be around them. You can be one corner of the puzzle and they could be one corner of the puzzle. And they're a part of the puzzle. They're a part of the grander whole, but they're not gonna be right next to you. Does that make sense? So right now, as the plan is getting shake, rattled and rolled and we're all becoming the greatest versions of ourselves, we're all working on ourselves and developing, you know, um, a different language could be, we're all ascending to the fifth dimension where our physical bodies are upgrading and we're purging all of our traumas um, in leadership, growth and development language. Like we're really just leaving behind a bunch of shit and we're trying to be efficient in our processes and be around people that are not just like-minded, but forward thinking in their values. So no matter what compartment you're in, no matter what language you speak, or if you're just going into the fucking holidays and you don't want to see these people and you feel like shit about seeing them, then don't fucking see them. Then don't see them. Decide, I am not the greatest version of myself when I'm around this person. I have to deal with them in some capacity because they're a part of my puzzle. How do I communicate this boundary in a very safe way for both of us that gets us to the end result of, I don't have to fucking see this person. I can send them love. You know, I have family members in my life that um, we share similar bloodlines and I love them from afar. I love them so much from afar. But if we're in the same room, a much different version of Sarah usually comes out. And a much different version of that person usually comes out. And it's not always pleasant and it's it's not always enjoyable for anyone else in the room. So we just don't go into the same room. But I love them so much and I send them blessings and I ask God to bless them and and I don't judge myself. I don't I don't have to go through the process of judging them and then them judging me and then asking God to forgive me for the judgments. I can just constantly be in flow with positive feelings for them. Constantly be in flow with positive feelings for them. Because I don't have to physically be around them. They're on the other corner of the puzzle. It's awesome. It's great. So, with that being said, sometimes it's effortless. Sometimes you can... Sorry, I'm just ripping up an onion here. Sometimes it's effortless and you just don't have to show up to the gathering. And you don't have to say to that person, hey, vibrationally, you just don't jive around me and I just don't jive around you, so let's just not jive around each other. Sometimes you don't have to say that and that's super cool. Like, you don't have to soapbox these moments. You don't have to say, like, you make me the worst version of myself. You, 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 you. Don't do that. Don't do that. If that's not healthy and safe, don't do that. I forget what step it is, but it's like when you're when you're apologizing in this in the um, in AA or NA. When you're apologizing, if it's not safe, it's not good to apologize to that person. Then don't fucking reach out to that person. Do that with God. Do that with God. Sorry, I did some fresh orange juice this morning, and it's just like fucking hitting the spot, hitting the spot. Organic OJ, so yummy. Um, 
So what was I saying? So if you do have to communicate this to this person, if you do have to tell this person because they're trying to show up at the party or they're trying to, you know, you need to set a healthy boundary and move them from one part of the puzzle, maybe that was right next to you, and you recognize this doesn't fit anymore right next to me, so why don't we find a new place for them? The steps that we should be taking, I'm a process person, so the steps that you should be taking before you even reach out to talk to this person, decide how you want them in your life. Decide what is the highest and greatest timeline for both of us. How do I want to communicate with them? Do I want to verbally communicate with them? Do I want to be in physical contact with them? Decide the boundary. Remember, boundaries aren't just like stay the fuck away. It's this is what I have to offer as well because this is safe for me. So decide what you want for that relationship. Decide ahead of time before you even reach out to this motherfucking person. And then we're going to utilize some of the tools that I learned in corporate where you don't want to fucking bombard someone say, hey, we're having this conversation right motherfucking now because it's Sag season. So we have to recognize that that's how we're going to want to communicate. We're going to say, I don't know if that's the healthiest way right now for this specific conversation, for this specific video and this specific um, reality that we're focusing on this week. So we're going to reach out to this person. We're going to say, hey, I'd love to have a chat with you. When's a good time? Book the time. Also, if this is someone that is maybe, you know, narcissistic or has been abusing and really enjoyed abusing unhealthy boundaries with you, even just sending that message is going to trigger something to go off. And they might say, they might call right away. They might like, fuck so again when's a good time to talk if they call right away and if it's not the right time for you just say hey these are the right times for me let's let's have this time to talk and then when you talk to this person you are not going to do this we're not going to say you make me feel there's nobody outside of you I'm not seeing anybody. <laughs> um, uh, sorry. I, only I statements. What's best for me? I feel this way right now. I feel this way. So I am going to take myself here. I really don't feel like I'm going to show up to this, this event. You know, I don't think it's what's best for me. So I've decided not to show up to that event. I am sorry if that affects you. It's not my intention. My intention is for everyone to be, you know, vibing at the same, at the same level. And then listen and let them have their reaction. And know and bubble yourself and know that it's not a reflection on you if they're floundering in this moment. Give them grace. Don't judge them. Let them have their experience of what's happening to them. If you're a very bright light and you've been really, you know, shining a bright light in their life for a while, unconsciously, they're going to be really upset. The moth doesn't like when the flame is taken away, even though it's going to fucking die by running into it over and over again. So and always remember that by you setting this healthy boundary with them gives that person also the space to have healthier people in their life. So even if you're terrified and even if this person is upset, you're doing what's best for both of you. Because when you're doing what's best for you, you're giving that vibration to the world that's available for them as well. So, have that conversation. They might say, well, well fuck you. Fuck you, you're going to ruin Christmas. You're going to ruin this. You're going to ruin this. You're going to ruin this. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Say, I can only do what is best for me. I can only control my thoughts, words, and actions. I cannot control your reaction. So you're allowed to have your reaction. You know, one of the, one of the conversations that I had with a, with a narcissistic family member when I was trying to explain to them, you know, why I don't show up to certain events. And I said, because, you know, I am just as worthy of feeling the joy that you feel. I am just as worthy of feeling the, the light 
and the love and the freedom that that person got to feel, you know, with the, the, the member berry picture of the whole thing. So I said to that person, you know, the way that you feel when I show up must be very effortless and joy filled and abundant. They're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I said, well, I am also worthy of that. I'm also worthy of that. So I'm going to feel that same joy and love and abundance, but in a safe space for me. But what about me? That's usually what someone who can only see past their nose will say. You're here to serve me. So when we're working towards equality, it can be very triggering for these people. But you also need to recognize that with love, you see them as they are, you meet them where they are, and you love them as they are. And you say, you're a part of my puzzle. And if you want to stay a part of my puzzle, this is what I have to offer you. If you cannot honor that, then you might not be a part of my puzzle. But I want you to be a part of my puzzle. I want you there. Healthy boundaries are about keeping people in with the right level of you to them ratio. I feel like I got it. I feel like I got the puzzle analogy. Please let me know if this is if this is slapping for you, if this is hitting, and if I really genuinely hope that this can be helpful. Um, we're almost at December 2022. So make sure going into the new year, like for me, for a lot of other light workers, I know that's something that Elizabeth April spoke about the other day was like boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Because next year we're gonna vibe. We're gonna vibe high. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be lovely. Uh, Aquarius. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun age. But yeah, so please let me know how I can best support and help. Please comment. Like I said, this is not, I don't have the full answers here. So please comment what, what has helped you set, what are some phrases and some terms that has helped you set healthy boundaries right now with people that are definitely in your life that you have to keep in your life. You know, these are for birth family members or for work relationships, chosen family as well. Um, please let me know what has worked for you. Please let this community know what has worked for you. And uh, let's start a dialogue this week. I love you guys. I love you girls. I love you aliens. I love you beings. I love every single fucking one of you. Every single one of you. I'm here if I can ever be helpful. <laughs>